Hello, friends of digital diffusion and optical diffusion. Today, we take a closer look at another hidden gem in Baselight, the diffuse operator. It has a simple interface, but please don't underestimate that one. I would go as far and say that it is part of my personal look identity. I, um, I personally, I love images with a good contrast, but I love a soft image texture. So that I would say is one of my trademarks and diffuse can help a lot with that. Okay, let's dive in and please, as usual, put your comments and questions in the chat or in the comment section below the videos. In this session, we examine the diffuse operator. We can find it in the spatial insert menu over here. And that means we can't bake it into 3D LUTs because spatial means that in order to process one pixel, the algorithm needs to consider the surrounding pixels. And this is something that 3D LUTs cannot achieve. Okay, I inserted the operator into the timeline and the set of controls is quite limited. So first I would start by raising the diffuse parameter. I start with raising it all the way up to 1.0 and we can see nothing happens yet on the image. So in order to see an effect, we need to raise the diffuse parameter and the mix parameter. So now I'm raising the mix parameter and now we can see that the tool starts to have an effect on the image. And as the name suggests, the tool diffuses the image like an optical diffusion filter. Diffuse basically creates a diffused version of the image underneath and then mixes that with the original image. If I raise the mix slider here all the way up to 1.0, we can see only the diffused image. What we notice here is that the diffused image per default is black and white, but we can adjust this with the saturation slider. So I bring down the mix level to a more modest level. And so here we can see that with saturation on zero, we add more of that silverish glow to the image. And if I raise the saturation slider, we can see now we are not losing any saturation when we add the diffusion. The diffuse parameter adjusts the size of the diffusion or the radius of the diffusion. With 1.0, it's quite large, then the tool acts more like a, like a glimmer glass or like a smoke diffusion filter. And if we use a smaller diffuse level, then we can see stronger halo effects here around highlights. And then the tool acts more like an optical promised filter. So let's find a good value for that shot here. So as I said, typically I start with diffusion all the way up on 1.0. And then my personal technique is to raise the mix level really, really high so that I'm getting used to that very diffused, very softish kind of image. And once I'm adapted to that after a few seconds, then I slowly lower the mix level to the point where I think the image looks really good and where the filter adds maybe to the quality of the image because as we can see now, if I go all the way down to zero now, we can see, oh, that image looks, actually, once we got used to the softer version, the overly soft version, now that version here looks maybe overly hard and maybe too crisp and too sharp. And that's why I typically, I prefer not to start with that image here as a reference, because then maybe adding diffusion might feel too artificial. My personal technique is let's start way too soft and then find the level by lowering the mix slider and going down here i would say something in that range here looks quite good to me so it's around 25 percent here for the mix so i'll show you and before and after so this is before this is after quite dramatic of an effect i would say and what i personally really love about the operator is how it removes that overly digital crispness and sharpness out of digitally acquired images with sharp lenses, for example. 
let's move on to the next example. And as all the other shots in the timeline today, they all have the same stack applied. So there's a basic grading layer here as a layer one. And then I have a look layer applied that adds a certain look to the image. And typically I apply the diffuse operator in a separate layer below my look layer. And typically I label that layer spatial and then I add the diffuse operator here into that layer. And typically I then combine it with other spatial look operations like texture equalizer, texture highlight, sharpen, etc. But today we focus only on the diffuse. Therefore I just insert it as a single strip to make it simpler in the stack. So now I will show you my normal diffuse technique one more time. I raise diffuse all the way up to 1.0. The saturation, personally, I always prefer here in the high 80 or 90% range. And then I add a lot of mix. One first that it's way too much. And then after a moment, lowering the mix level until I feel that the image looks really nice, not overly crisp, but also not unrealistically soft. Yeah, maybe something around here. So usually I end up in a range between 10 and 0.20 to maximum 0.30, I would say, for a typical diffuse as a look operator. Again, here we can see quite a dramatic effect. This is before, this is after, but I, I really love that effect and that softness it adds to the images. And here the third similar example. This image already looks quite cinematic, I would say. It's shot on an anamorphic lens, has great lighting, great framing, etc. Still, what we should see is that adding the diffuse, from my point of view, adds an even better cinematic quality to the image. Now I'm starting to mix it in. This is definitely too much. Slowly lowering the value. Yeah, maybe something around here again. I would say it's again around the 20% mark. And this is the before, this is after. One more time. So this is my default approach to diffuse that I used on a lot of my personal projects. So far, I haven't explained the aspect parameter of the diffuse operator. Let's raise the mix first one more time. With the aspect, we can stretch the diffusion either in the vertical or in the horizontal direction to mimic more like an anamorphic optical effect on the image. But personally, I rarely used that parameter. My default approach is to leave it on zero. Also, I haven't mentioned yet that diffuse is not color managed. That means it behaves differently depending on the current stack color space. So if I insert a color space operator above and convert into a different color space, for example, into a display referred 2.4 gamma, we can see it changes the effect of the diffuse tool a little bit. But generally, I think the tool works best when we apply it in a lock working color space. In my case, that is currently T-Log, but could also be uh, Log C3, Aces CCT, etc. On the next example, I show you a small variation. So let's insert diffuse one more time. And I raise the saturation. And let's start again with the normal procedure and add a little bit mix. But as I mentioned before, if we use a lower diffuse value, we use a smaller radius and then it acts more like a promist filter. And this can help in examples like this to change the texture of the image. So what if we want to give a really fluffy feeling here, almost like cotton wool balls here for these flowers, then using a smaller diffuse value can really help us in selling that feeling 
to the audience before after to give the audience almost like a haptic sensation is always very important for me in grading so i always try to transmit the feeling and the texture of the objects to the viewers and i think diffuse can really help in that regard if we want to sell a really softish really fluffy kind of feeling like in this shot let's move on here i want to show you a different technique so first i add the diffuse into a layer this time then here again i guess it's a great example to see how with the normal procedure we can get a better feeling of depth out of the image this is without this is with but in this case i want to show you a different technique that i personally used a lot for flashbacks or to separate a sequence in the movie from a surrounding sequence and to do that i use a diffuse in a layer and then i combine it with a shape in this case i use the vignette quick shape let's make it really small and i use really a lot of feather yeah maybe something like that and then i invert the shape so we're applying the diffuse more only to the outside but that also would not look very realistic I mean, it's almost not noticeable here but then the key is to lower now the opacity of the inverted shape and that also adds the effect to some extent to the center. So now we have 40% of the effect here in the center and 100% on the outside of the image. And now we can get away with really high diffuse values here with the mix and still don't have like a super cheesy looking image. Let's do maybe something like this. And now I show you the effect of that vignette. Typically, I would add that above look strip and I would label it vignette, for example. So now I show you the before and after, and we can see it's a really strong difference. So we, the audience will clearly feel that this shot does not belong maybe to the surrounding shots if they don't have that effect applied but still it doesn't look like there's a super obvious cheesy glow effect applied to the image i really love the subtlety of the effect on a real project i would probably now dial it down a little bit more because i always try to stay more on the less obvious side and now let's copy paste that effect just to some more shots to see the difference and how well that technique can work to alter the appearance of images. This is before, this is after, or on this shot here. Let's put it in. Of course, we can also always adjust the size or the shape of the vignette, but I think you get the idea before, after. And if I overdo it, before after just that you've seen an even stronger effect of that on the next shot i want to show you a different technique so here we have a bright window in the background and it has a, already a little bit of a flare effect in the image but also it's a little bit coldish to some extent because of the look layer that i applied but overall i'm happy with the colors and the look of the shot i just want to enhance that window here in some way and i will show you what i will do so i add a new layer here and add a shape to it again i will go with the quick shape vignette place it over here add a lot of feather and now inside the vignette first i will go into film grade shadows and raise the shadows pivot all the way up now i will raise the shadows value that will basically lift the black point in that area and i will tint it slightly warmish 
in that area. And then I add a diffuse operator below the film grade with the typical settings. For now, let's even add a little bit more warmth to overdo it because now I can go back into the shape and reduce the opacity a bit. And so now let's have a look at it before, after. So we can see we can basically simulate something like a diffuse lens flare in some parts of the image. And in that case, I added some warmth to that flare to give the shot a little bit different character if I want to get rid of that coldish color there in that area, for example. So let's adjust maybe the shape a little bit more and the opacity. And then we can also track that shape into the shot because this is shot with a moving camera. Luckily it's a short shot. Yeah, and we can see it has a nice effect on the image before, after. And the same technique I want to show you on these three shots here. So here on the first one, we can see that at the end of the shot, we already have a nice lens flare here coming into the image, but it adds more like a purple color. It's not really adding a lot of warmth to the image. The second shot here doesn't have a flare, but it has a sunny backlit feeling. And the third shot here also has the sun coming more from the background or from the maybe top left. And, and to connect all these shots closer together, I show you that technique now in a similar way. So I add a layer two here to the shot and attach the vignette shape to that layer to simulate these really diffuse, strong flares. Typically I place the shape somewhere outside the frame and then use a really large feather radius. In that case, maybe 200. Yeah, that's, that's really big, but I think it often works nice in these situations. Then let's go into film grade, raise the shadows pivot, raise the shadows value so that the image gets that look with a lot of added flare, tinted nice and warm, like so. And then of course, add a lot of diffusion to it. So probably it's now way too strong, but I can easily dial that down here with the opacity of the shape. And actually what I want to do is, first I want to track the shape into that area. And secondly, I want to increase the effect towards the end of the shot. So let's go here to the end of the shot and place it maybe somewhere here. Maybe it could be even a little bit stronger here. Then I'm adding a keyframe for the opacity. Going to the beginning of the shot. Here I'm lowering the opacity. I'm going back. Now I'm, I'm attaching a tracker to the shape. Maybe let's use the trees here for tracking. And let's have a look at the shot. Yeah, I think we nicely enhanced the effect of the flare. Before, after. And let's have a look at the next shots. So here the camera moves upwards. Let's copy layer two quickly over into this shot. Let's say here at the end of the shot, we want to have it just above the top right corner of the frame, like so. And then we attach a tracker to it and use these buildings to track it. How 
How does that look? Yeah, not too bad. Maybe it's a little bit too intense. So I'll dial down the result blending a bit. And let's copy it on the last shot. Quite strong. But if I place it a little bit further away, then also adjust a little bit more the opacity. And on this one, maybe let's add even, even a little bit more diffusion. And let's reduce the result blending again to some extent. And yeah, quite a nice effect on this shot as well. I hope you could see how a technique like this can tie different looking shots closer together look-wise by adding a similar lighting characteristic to these shots, even like this artificial lens flare here. And that's all what I have prepared for today's session. Yeah, uh, thanks for staying with me for this session today. And I just say goodbye and see you for the next one. Bye bye.